Hi, everybody. It's lunchtime, and guess what? I'm hungry for snacks. So, perfect time to do my new Universal Yums box. Doesn't say where it's from, as far as, you know, what country on the outside. So let's start opening it. Let's see what we've got. It says, welcome to Russia. Okay. I, and I've been to Russia, too. Beautiful country. Let's see. Of course, on this little card, they've got you know, your, the Yum scoreboard, where you put down the names of the people that tried them and what they thought. But I mean, we do this now and try them. We don't need to fill that in. Uh, da -da. It's got an area for... More fave yums, which looks like kind of like um, mostly hard candy, maybe. Yeah. And then vote on an upcoming box as to what box you'd like to see. So, then inside, there's always the little booklet on Russia. Off we go to Russia. See the ballet dancer in the front, because they're known for the Bolshoi Ballet that I've been to. <laughs> And it was back in 1985 when it was still considered the Soviet Union. And so they control everything you did when you went there. And I was with a group of 14-year-old hockey players. Now, i got to tell this story. So we had been on a train for 16 hours coming from Finland. And they decided to assign us a tour person named Igor. Right away, that kind of went, you know, red flag. <laughs> so they wouldn't tell us where we were going to go. And that night, they come get us in the bus. And where do they take us to but the Bolshoi Ballet? I mean, how wonderful. Not for 14-year-old boys. <laughs> and we were all so sleepy from being up all, you know, on the train and all that. So everybody was falling asleep during it. And, you know, and, and they really hold their ballet and, and reverence. And, and here we are all just, oh, and I managed to stay awake. But I also had my daughter, Michelle, who a lot of you know. She was 10 years old and a ballet dancer. So she thought it was great. I think she's one of the only ones of all the kids that liked it. <laughs> so that's my Bolshoi ballet story. <laughs> anyway, it says, off we go to Russia. And it's got different places to explore. Now, we went again in, uh, when did we go? What year was that? It was about f four years ago, four or five years ago. Anyway, Bob and I and my brother and his wife, we went on a, a cruise that went to St. Petersburg. And we were in St. Petersburg for two days. And, oh, my God, it was just wonderful. <laughs> Saw a lot of beautiful things. So uh, then they also have a recipe on how to make beef stroganoff. That sounds good. I, I love beef stroganoff. Um, a trivia train, if you want to play a trivia game. Which uh, is all on Russia. Kind of. So probably not a lot of us would know the answers to that. Then we come, of course, to the page. We start here with the goodies. So let's get started. Now, as you know, I always do these by myself because Bob doesn't want to be on camera. <laughs> and he's so cute. <laughs> and I always have what ends up being a Bob pile and a me pile. So, let's get started. Maybe I'll sneak a few over to him. Not showing them on camera. Just for him to try one. The first one is a... <laughs> Can you read that? <laughs> I can't read a single thing on here. Nothing. Nothing at all. Looks like chips. Let's see. Okay, the little booklet says. <laughs> uh, 
Sovietsky cheese potato chips. Sounds good. Made with absurdly addictive Russian cheese. Time to try the devil's apple. You know it better as the potato. When potatoes were imported from America in the 1700s, Russians gave them this sinful name due to their absence in the Bible. Their odd shape didn't help either. In parentheses. Little did they know, Tsar Nicholas I would order potato planting in the 1850s, paving the way for modern Russians to use them in practically everything, from potato dumplings to vodka, to these crispy chips coated, coated in Russia's slightly sweet and totally addictive Sobieski cheese. Okay, well, let's go and try it. Smell good. The smell comes out right away. Mm. <laughs> Smells like cheese. Here, huh? Try one. Okay. It's okay. Not any different than some of the <laughs> amazing chips we get here. So, I don't know. Good. I would eat the whole bag, you know. What do you think, honey? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that we'll put into. Let's see. Not as much room here. Bob's pile. Next we have. Oh, it's, it's upside down. Oh, I know all about this. Mushroom croutons, naturally and artificially flavored. Well, let's see what they say and hear about it. I wish they had them in better order. They call it the Bolete, B-O-L-E-T-E, Mushroom Bread Bites. As you're reading this, dozens of basket-toting Russians are scouring the forest floors of Siberia. What are they doing? Mushroom hunting. It's Russia's most popular pastime. <laughs> oh, Okay. So much so that most local 10-year-olds can easily distinguish edible varieties <laughs> like the prized bolet from poisonous ones like the lethal death cap. But there is one thing Russians love more than hunting for mushrooms, eating them. <laughs> you can partake with these crunchy twice-baked potato Rusks complete with bolete mushroom seasoning. All you have to do is hunt for the bag. No. Can we trust that these are the ones that don't kill you? What do you think, honey? Should we trust it? Probably wasn't listening. <laughs> no. <laughs> these are mushroom croutons. We've got to trust that they're the kind that are not going to kill us. Okay. I don't like croutons on my salads anyway because they, they have a little small arch and it tends to rip the roof of my mouth. Hey, honey. It's okay. It tastes like mushrooms. So like I say, I wouldn't put it on my salad or anything because I don't eat croutons. What do you think? Mm -hmm. They taste like mushrooms? Yeah. Oh, Bob's pile. Then, yes, now to the good stuff. Mop, muck, mop, nut, mop, muck. <laughs> Can't read it. Looks good though, doesn't it? Of course, nothing on the package is readable to me. So let's find it on here. That must be this. Nuts and Milk Chocolate Wafer. This yum takes us to Stare Oskol, the headquarters of the company that makes it. Slavianka. When we asked their team which of their products they thought our customers would love most, they said without a shadow of a doubt that it would be this one. We have to agree, after all, with layers of soft wafer filled with hazelnut cocoa cream, 
a sprinkling of crushed peanuts, and a melt-in-your-mouth chocolate glaze. What's not to love? Got my interest. But take a bite and decide for yourself. Was their prediction correct? They look almost like, you know, a, a type of uh, Kit Kats. Let's see. Hard to get it out. I don't want to take it totally out of the, the bag, but it looks good. I'm trying to squeeze it. <laughs> There's the top side. Want to try a bite? What? It's a sweetie cup. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. I asked if Bob wanted something, and then he's not a big sweet eater. Which. Makes us the perfect couple. Because <laughs> I love sweets. He likes the salty stuff. We get along great. He likes white meat. I like dark. Anyway. Oh, I see. What happened was while I was squeezing, I was making the top of it come off into the wrapper. But this will be going into my spot to eat as soon as I get off camera. Then we have Ozera milk pear. Let's see what the heck that is. It's a ripe pear milk chocolate. This Russian chocolate bar is full of beauty. That was my first thought. I looked at it. I thought, oh, it's beautiful. No, we're not talking about the sleek wrapper or even the delicious looking chocolate inside. We're talking about the pear filling. You see, Russia is home to an extra sweet, highly sought after pear known as the Krizolia, which literally translates to beauty. So what are you waiting for? It's not every day you get to take a bite of beauty, especially enrobed in luscious Russian milk chocolate. Okay. Oh, forcing me to do these things. I'll have to open this whole wrapper. It's got an inside wrapper too. <laughs> Come on, baby. Open up. You want a piece of this chocolate? Pear inside. I'm gonna break off a piece for him. Once I hand it to him, he'll eat it. <laughs> okay, let's see. He's kind of, can you tell, kind of a Clear. It is good though. I gotta admit, I've never had a chocolate with that kind of uh, pear flavor like that and that substance in it. Yep. Let me make sure here. Mmm. I like that. What do you think? Mm -hmm. They gave it a thumbs up too. So both of us like that. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Next, we have another. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> Looks like some kind of a cookie. More like uh, a Kit Kat again. Let's see what they call it here. I'm going to guess, because I don't see, no, I mean, the picture's way over here. I'm going to guess that it's 
Oh, there is an arrow. Okay. It's called a boiled milk and chocolate cake. Take a look at this yum. Are you looking? We'll put it up for you. Do what they're told. Awesome. Now you're locking eyes with a Russian icon. Seriously, barring President Putin, there's no face more familiar. Okay. That's because this tree called Alianka, a popular Russian girl's name, is the country's most famous by far ever since it was first crafted in Moscow's Red October factory in 1966. Since then, several local ladies have claimed to be the inspiration behind the little girl in the wrapper, though the company insists she's not based on a real person. Here, the famous chocolate, the same exact recipe as 66, coats a rich wafer cake filled with another local favorite. Sunchonkya? <laughs> S-G-U-S-H-Y-O-N-K-A. A ridiculously creamy caramel made by boiling sweetened condensed milk. There's surely no better way to show you Russia's sweet side or to kick off your amazing Russia adventure, which will be filled with plenty more sweet and salty, savory, and seriously scrumptious surprises to come. Okay. Let's see this neater. Okay, it looks kind of like the other one did. Mm. <laughs> I expected it to be hard to bite into, and it is a cake. Want to bite? You sure? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. Kind of like the little cakes we can buy, you know, and <laughs> like the little Debbie's and all those. Let me see, try again. Reminds me of a ho-ho. <laughs> With the way the caramel was in between the layers and stuff, you know. Mm, that's good. Okay, and then that, this last big item is this. <laughs> Can you read it? It's a white chocolate and hazelnut cream wafer. It's luscious hazelnut cream in a sugar cone shell. This yum is a fairy tale. No, really. Its name, Ordinary Miracle, is based on the title of a Russian fable in which a wizard transforms a man into a bear who then falls in love with a princess, of course. Sounds more like an extraordinary miracle, us. <laughs> but even that isn't as fantastic as the yum it expired. Yes, we're saying that this crispy wafer filled with lush, luscious hazelnut and white chocolate cream is even more incredible than a bear princess love story. Good old fairy tales. Make every little girl want to find a, some ugly old bear and want to love them, you know. Anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah, these are wafers. Oh, I see, and on the other side. Kind of reminds me of those, um, those cookies you can get that have peanut butter in them. You know what ones I mean? Want to try one, honey? Cat's got his tongue today. Okay, let's try. It's good. Be better with peanut butter, but it almost tastes it almost tastes like peanut butter. A very light peanut butter in a way. Mm.
good lunch. Then they always put in a little sweet, what they call it, yum yum bag. And what it usually is, is all these little, you know, small little pieces of candy. So let's see what they put in today. You can see, a lot of times it's hard candy you know, of different flavors. That's indicative of their, their region. Oh, this is a pretty big piece of something. I think there is a write-up on it. Let's see. It's called Coconut and White Chocolate. Put the coconut on there. Hazelnut Balls. That's another factoid you learned from the trivia. That Russia boast, boasts <laughs> the coldest inhabited town on Earth. So you may be a bit shocked to learn that parts of the country are, get this, subtropical. Take the city of Sochi, located on the Black Sea coast. It's nicknamed the Russian Riviera because of its 80 degree summers, dolphins, and coconut bearing palms. Consider this shredded coconut coated white chocolate, whole hazelnut filled ball, your ticket to the Russian tropics. I don't know if I'm gonna try it. See, is there more than one? Package out. Yeah, there's two in here. You want to try one? Coconut? <laughs> I'm not as much into coconut. And then there's two uh, fruit. Let's see, where did they go? Fruit flavored. Little hard candies. Yeah, exotic fruit jellies. So. And they're soft. They're not hard. Ripe mango, blackcurrant mint, and strawberry pepper. If you've completed the trivia, you already know that Russians love jelly, even when it's made of meat. Fortunately, for those not so keen on trying jiggly pork, Russians also love a different kind of jelly. Fruity jelly candy locally called marmalade. T tins of it have been flying off the shelves of Moscow candy stores for centuries. Now you can try their juiciest modern varieties, ripe mango, strawberry, and black pepper, or mint and blackberry curd. What'd you think of that coconut thing? Good. You liked it. So, uh, let's see. Which one's which, I wonder? They're <laughs> not. Well, this is probably the black currant mint. I would guess this is the mango one. Let's see. Is it soft? Yeah, it's soft. Looks. <laughs> it's mango. But it's good, you know. If somebody gives it to me to eat, I will. I won't specifically go buy it myself, but it's good. I mean, here's the other one. So, I mean, this is the blackberry one. Black, black currant mint. Now, I don't see a strawberry one. So, no. Now, this must be the, well, it might be the strawberry. It does look more like a strawberry color. I thought maybe it would be, uh, you know, like those strawberry ones that we have in the States where they're hard on the outside and as you suck them, there's strawberry stuff inside. Yeah. But it's not. It's a whole soft. So that'll do it for this month. What'd you think? Pretty good stuff, huh? At least it had some sweetness to the sweet stuff. <laughs> some of the countries, their sweetness stuff aren't very sweet. <laughs> so, if you like this video please hit like. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, please hit subscribe. Any comments, please make down below. Maybe if I sit back farther. Yeah, down below. 
So, hope you're having a good week. It's, like I say, nice and sunny and hot in Yuma. I think we'll just uh, finish eating this, these goodies. <laughs> Are you envious? <laughs> hope you're having a good day. I love you all. Bye.